Worldwide, three out of five people die due to chronic inflammatory diseases. I know, it's a ridiculously high number, and I don't mean to scare you away with it, but rather hope that this catches your attention to why inflammation is such an important topic for our health. Okay, but first of all, inflammation, generally speaking, is not bad. It is necessary for us to survive, as it is a mechanism that protects us from anything that enters our body and isn't supposed to be there. Having said this, inflammation can become bad, can become really, really bad. It becomes bad when inflammation turns chronic. So in fact, we have two different kinds of inflammation there, acute and chronic inflammation. And this video will focus mainly on the effects on our health of chronic inflammation. Okay, but before we start, my name is Patrick, I'm a PhD student and I focus a lot on my YouTube channel on inflammation and also on the importance of the microbiome. So if any of these topics interest you, uh, please make sure to subscribe. And also, if this video is helpful or you think it's just a very valuable content to YouTube, uh, please make sure to hit the like button because this tells the YouTube algorithm to distribute it to more, to more people and thereby I can help uh, more people to learn about the microbiome and also about inflammation. Okay, without further ado, what makes chronic inflammation so bad for our health? To understand this, we first have to understand that there are, as I said, two different kinds of inflammation, acute and chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation, for instance, kicks in when you get a cut, and some bacteria enter your body, your immune system rushes into the site of the cut and fights off these invaders. Same is true if you have a cold, you get acute inflammation for about a week to fight off the virus. However, chronic inflammation is much harder to understand, at least the cause of it. And I will not talk much about the cause of chronic inflammation in this video, but rather focus on the symptoms of it and on the diseases and I will address uh, the question of the causality and also how to treat chronic inflammation in upcoming videos. Okay, so let's first maybe talk about the symptoms of inflammation in general. Um, again, chronic and acute inflammation have very different symptoms. If you have uh, acute inflammation, the symptoms are very obvious. Again, if we take the example of the cut, you get redness, heat a little bit increase in heat also if you have fever for instance some swelling and some increased blood flow it's hard to miss kind of acute inflammation however chronic inflammation the symptoms are less obvious but can be um, long term very bad for your health so to say so one of the main symptoms um, that are caused by chronic inflammation are for instance fatigue so people with chronic inflammation experience constant fatigue. So even though they slept maybe eight hours a night, they still feel sloppy when they get up and just want to keep sleeping. And also their energy levels throughout the day are rather low. And then another symptom uh, of chronic inflammation is low mood. This is something I think personally affects me the most when we're talking about inflammation. I find that when I eat shitty for a while or even when I just had a cold or when I didn't exercise or when my stress levels were high, this really affects my mood and I think it's due to chronic inflammation. Um, another thing that um, yeah, is caused basically by chronic inflammation is weight gain or weight gain is a symptom of it. And I will come back to it later when we talk about the diseases. Another symptom of chronic inflammation is chronic pain. So the pain can be very different for every person. So for me, for instance, I found that I'm susceptible to knee pain, probably also because I uh, work out and this makes maybe my joints a little bit more susceptible to pain there. But for others, it might be pain in like the gut or abdominal region or somewhere completely different. Um, and there are actually also really cool studies that show that when we reduce inflammation levels, chronic inflammation levels, we also can get rid of the pain. Um, for instance, there was one study, to take this ahead a little bit, that um, 
took patients with rheumatoid arthritis and simply gave them omega-3 supplements which usually are anti-inflammatory and they found that the, um, yeah, the pain kind of disappeared or was decreased severely. And I personally also found that when I have knee pain and I supplement with omega-3 fatty acids or if I bump up my fish intake, um, my knee pain usually disappears. And then another symptom of chronic inflammation is frequent infections. It's kind of counterintuitive if you think about it, right? Because you would think, okay, we have inflammation is high, so our immune system is kind of ready to fight everything and uh, is really ready um, yeah, to, to go into war. But it's actually not the case. It's not so easy. In fact, if your immune system is constantly on due to chronic inflammation, um, your immune cells, first of all, become slightly exhausted and they yeah it's like just fighting always the wrong thing and then the real bad guys just make it through and also they are yeah really distracted and really focus too much on fighting um yourself so to say or whatever caused the chronic inflammation and then miss the virus that caused the cold so if you're having frequent infections frequent colds chronic inflammation might be the cause of it okay there are of course many more symptoms and these symptoms can vary from person to person a lot but if one of these symptoms affects you or if you have one of these symptoms it might be due to chronic inflammation and then let's talk about the diseases caused by chronic inflammation um, because when i said in the beginning that three out of five uh, deaths worldwide are caused by chronic inflammatory diseases I actually talk about these diseases and when I say I actually talk about it, I uh, base my knowledge on studies. So actually I found exactly these numbers in uh, published studies. And again, as always, all the studies will be linked in the description. Okay, so these diseases are at least in part caused by chronic inflammation, which is crazy if you think about it and probably new to many people. but. Let me explain how chronic inflammation causes some of these diseases. First of all, cancer. Cancer is a very difficult topic and I usually don't like to touch it very much because also healthy people can get cancer. It's a matter of chance and preventing cancer is just a matter of increasing your odds not to get it. Cancer is usually, to, to speak broadly, caused by um, DNA mutations that then lead to constant proliferation of these cells and then that these cells are not recognized by the immune system. So it's kind of a two, two way street if you want um, which is based on like uh, DNA mutations and uh, immune system not recognizing these cancer cells. Okay having said this we can improve our odds or at least we can minimize any DNA damage and this is exactly what chronic inflammation does. Chronic inflammation can lead to DNA damage in our cells. And there were a couple of studies that looked at this and they found that when um, inflammatory cytokines, so proteins that are pro-inflammatory, uh, are released by immune cells, they um, yeah, kind of stimulate the production of reactive nitrogen and reactive oxygen species in cells and these reactive molecules can cause DNA damage and therefore mutations. In fact, so many studies really estimate that about 25% of all cancers are caused to chronic inflammation. And I personally think that this number might even increase um, in the next years that we become more and more aware of that chronic inflammation is actually one of the main underlying causes of cancer. Okay, the next one is heart diseases. Heart diseases is not simply a matter of your cholesterol levels. I've talked about this in different videos, but what really leads to heart diseases is actually inflammation. So inflammation has to be there to cause uh, heart diseases in most cases. Not saying in all cases, but in most cases, because the plaques that eventually clog your arteries are actually loaded with immune cells. Immune cells that try to eat 
the oxidized lipoproteins. And guess what causes oxidation of lipoproteins? Right, it's inflammation. So it's again, this inflammation leads to the production of reactive oxygen species that then oxidizes lipoproteins. These lipoproteins don't, can't really dock to their LDL receptors, lipoprotein receptors, and thereby get somehow stuck inside the arterial wall and immune, system, immune cells rush in and try to get rid of these um, oxidized LDL particles. Um, they usually fail to do it, become exhausted and so-called foamy macrophages for their um, yeah, phenotype that they are loaded with these um, with cholesterol and this then builds up, builds up further and can cause to uh, heart, heart attacks or strokes. So there was actually a really well done study that um, checked on the association between inflammation and heart diseases and they found that people with high inflammation are four times more likely to develop heart diseases than people with low inflammation. It's crazy, right? Four times more likely. Then uh, for diabetes, it's kind of it's a funny coincidence. I don't know if funny is the right word here, but it's a coincidence that also people with high inflammation levels are again four times more likely to develop diabetes. Again, diabetes is not as simple as a matter of carbs. Sure, high uh, carbohydrate consumption definitely ca can cause diabetes or is very much associated with it. But another factor we cannot neglect here is inflammation. The molecular mechanism behind it is rather complicated, but in brief, um, inflammation can lead to insulin resistance in the cells and insulin resistance is simply the hallmark of diabetes. And again, these associations, these like four times more increase with high inflammation levels, these are just numbers we can not disregard. It's uh, really crazy. Okay, then uh, another disease caused by chronic inflammation is Alzheimer's. I talk a lot on my channel about how inflammation affects the brain. And it can affect the brain in kind of, if you want, two different ways. Either affecting our mood, something I already mentioned in the beginning, or how it affects our cognitive function. And there are actually Again, really well done studies that show that people who uh, start having Alzheimer's have already really high inflammation levels in the brain. So meaning the inflammation precedes the cognitive decline, generally speaking. And then there are also really good studies in animals that show that if you inject the animal some inflammatory agents, they usually develop cognitive decline and later Alzheimer's uh, very fast. Okay, and this also brings me then to the next topic I already mentioned at the beginning with the low mood is that one disease caused by chronic inflammation is depression. In fact, I think that depression in many cases is in an inflammatory disease. Depression is a very complicated disease, but it should be at least in some cases viewed as inflammatory diseases. Why I'm saying this? Well, because there's so much evidence about it and I've made a video which I will link somewhere here. You can watch into more detail, but let me just talk briefly about one study that nicely illustrates this. So um, one treatment, and now I'm gonna go a little bit technical, so I apologize for this, but one treatment for hepatitis C infections, hepatitis C virus infections, is the injection of in uh, interferon alpha, an inflammatory cytokine that increases inflammation in the body, which we need to fight off um, yeah, the virus. But studies found that this treatment leads to depression, to full-blown depression, in more than 40% of people undergoing this treatment. That's just a crazy number. But good thing is that future studies or further studies have found that when we then supplement with omega-3 fatty acids, again this super anti-inflammatory agent, they found that this depression levels are more than half. So we can do, or people who undergo treatment can do something about it. But again, this nicely illustrates why I think that 
depression is in many cases an inflammatory disease. Then um, something I also already touched on in the beginning is the topic of weight gain or obesity, obesity. So fat cells secrete inflammatory molecules and this is really a vicious cycle. So inflammation not only lead to more fat gain but more fat gain or more fat cells also lead to more inflammation and then you have really this upward spiral and it makes it always harder to lose weight. However, really one of the most uh, effective ways to reduce inflammation is to lose weight. So countless studies show that when people lose weight, inflammation levels go down. So that's a very important um, hint, or well, not just a hint, it's clear evidence that losing weight reduces inflammation. And then something I think I don't need to go into detail is of course that chronic inflammation leads to inflammatory diseases like for instance the rheumatoid arthritis I mentioned in the beginning. Okay, a short video can only touch so many topics. I could talk now for an hour longer here but I will try to break this topic of inflammation or of chronic inflammation into many different videos. So I hope that you make sure to subscribe for upcoming videos and also make sure to write down in the comment section, uh, comment section if you have any questions regarding any of these diseases or symptoms and I'm happy to make a video in much more detail because all the diseases, all the symptoms actually deserve a topic by themselves. Okay, here's one more video that shows different ways on how to reduce inflammation and here's another video that talks a little bit all about anti-inflammatory foods. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you next time.